Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. I'd say welcome to Atlanta, but I'm guessing you've probably been here more than just this instant. So me welcoming you here is probably a little bit late in the game. Um, but uh, it's the first time I've seen many of your faces, so welcome to Atlanta. Um, one of the things you may or may not know about me is that I was actually born here uh, at DeKalb County uh, General Hospital. So I did not grow up here, but there were some roots, so it's sort of fun to be doing the OpenStack Summit. Uh, before I get started on this, I want to let everybody know, if you don't already know, we've got a really fun, uh, uh, awesome book that we put together. Uh, Lisa, who's the main author on it, is uh, back in the back and going to be doing, um, oh, she's dancing around now. Um, so everybody, everybody watch Lisa dance. Um, nope. <laughs> uh, she'll, she'll be back in the back, uh, available to give them out and sign them and stuff like that. So uh, definitely, definitely take a, um, a peek at it. There's a particularly uh, snarky uh, illustration on, on one of the pages that I particularly enjoy myself. Um, uh, so anyway, give that a, give that a shot. So uh, I've only got 20 minutes and I typically don't tend to get through my talks in the allotted time anyway. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and jump right in, um, and I'm going to, uh, in theory, tell you everything you've ever wanted to know about the future of cloud uh, and where it's going. Uh, so after this, you'll have all of the secrets uh, and know everything, um, and that's all probably completely not true. Um, so my name is Monty Taylor. I work for Hewlett Packard, as you might be able to figure out by the very large Hewlett Packard logo uh, on the slide, um, and the hp.com after my email address. Uh, I also, for those of you who don't know me as well, uh, sit on the OpenStack Technical Committee, uh, the OpenStack Foundation Board, um, and uh, I'm a past PTL of the OpenStack Infra pro Program, uh, where I'm also currently a core, uh, core reviewer. So, uh, so we do a lot of stuff with OpenStack on a day-to-day -day basis, and I'm going to talk about a little bit of that today. Um, but uh, uh, to start off with, I would like to show the stereotypical OpenStack marketing slide, because it's the best uh, marketing slide in the world. Um, and also, it's, it's more graphically uh, uh, interesting than any of the other slides that I'm going to show you, uh, because I, it turns out, am not a graphic designer uh, and do not make slides that uh, are this pretty. So, um, so I, as I'm assuming most of you know since you're here, uh, OpenStack is some open source cloud software. Um, and, uh, uh, and that uh, typically needs more explanation for other audiences. Um, I'm assuming at this point that most of you know that it is uh, software that provides compute, networking, and storage services uh, on top of some hardware uh, to your applications. But it's your applications part of it that is the interesting part to me at this point. Um, that little gray box up the top uh, that looks sort of unimportant because it's not, it's not what we're here to build. We're here to, to design and, and, and to decide what we're going to do with, with OpenStack over the next six months. Um, I think it's extremely, in, extremely important for us to keep that top box in mind. Um, because the whole reason that we have cloud, the whole reason that we have hybrid cloud stories and things like this is in service of, uh, in service of your, your application. Um, because it, at, at, its, at its root, cloud is, uh, is an abstraction layer. At least it is to me. Um, it, it, can be a, it can be a force multiplier. Uh, it can allow you to get your thing done uh, quicker and easier. Uh, it can allow you to, uh, to make choices uh, in, a, in, an agile, uh, uh, in an agile manner so that you're not, say, putting in a ticket to get a new server that's going to come back in three months, um, and maybe it'll be working or maybe it won't be working. Um, these things, are, these things are, 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 uh, are tricky things to deal with. Um, but I think that also this is a thing where I, I'm a little bit at odds with, uh, with the, normal, um, the normal things people say. Because uh, when you start talking to customers, and, and weirdly enough, HP lets me talk to customers, which is distressing, I'm sure, for everybody involved. Um, uh, one, one of the things that we'll typically tell people is that, listen, cloud is a bit different. Uh, you, you, need to, you need to start thinking about the journey to get your, your applications ready for cloud, right? Like, it's, it's, you got to do things differently, you know, because cloud, clouds go away or, or, or whatever. Um, and, and so we, we talk a lot about the, um, uh, the difficulty that enterprise, uh, enterprise customers might have in running their traditional enterprise applications in the cloud. Um, and I actually think that it's not as bad as all that. Um, and to illustrate that, and to illustrate where I think that's going, I'm going to talk about myself, because narcissism is my best quality. Um, and I'm going to talk about some of the stuff that we do uh, with the OpenStack uh, Infra program, which it turns out is all one big cloud application. So if we're going to think about that gray box at the top of the OpenStack marketing slide, um, uh, 
Uh, it's, it's a readily available example of that. Um, and it starts off um, with a very awful piece of enterprise quality Java software um, called Garrett, uh, which we use as the basis of our entire OpenStack developer workflow uh, system. So this is just a screenshot of that uh, because I couldn't come up with something else to show you to talk about Garrett. Um, and the point of this isn't to, to say things about Garrett uh, as to what we do with it in the project. If you're involved in OpenStack, you will have seen many screens like this, uh, and it, it's nothing new to you. Uh, it's, a, it's a code review system. It has Git repositories baked into it. It has some APIs, and that's all great. Um, the thing about it is that it is a monolithic Java application. Uh, it is not intended to run in a cloud. Uh, in fact, I believe that one of the, the times that we told some of the developers earlier that we're, we're talking to them about some performance problems we had, and they're like, well, what, what, machine, what type of machine are you running it on? We're like, we're running it in a VM in the cloud. And they're like, oh my gosh, you can't do that. That doesn't make any sense. Um, we're quite happily and, uh, and successfully running it. Um, in fact, I believe it might be the largest Garrett in the world. Um, and it is running in a public cloud. Um, it, is, it is a single instance running on a single machine. Uh, and so if it goes down, it, it's a bad thing. Like it, it, all of the developer productivity and all of OpenStack stops if this goes down. Uh, luckily, it turns out that doesn't actually happen as often as the marketing materials might make you think. Um, uh, it turns out you can actually just run this in the cloud. Now, what you need to do is the same thing you need to do with all your other normal IT things. You got to take backups, you know? <laughs> it's like, don't just run it in the cloud and expect to not back it up ever. Like, you got to do the things you do to system in. But this is sort of a step one. This is, I'm going to start with a single monolithic Java application running in a cloud, uh, and it's going to work. Um, but that's great. But cloud is there to get us past that, it's to get us to the next step. So cloud is there to, to allow us to move at a, at a higher velocity. Um, it's, allow us to, it's there to, to allow us to do things that we can't just do with that single uh, Garrett running in a cloud instance. Um, and so starting off with just that Garrett there running and we had a, a single Jenkins server connected to it, which I'll also point out is a single monolithic Java application that is basically akin to a normal enterprise app. Um, also not particularly well suited for the cloud. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. Um, that was great three years ago when we had uh, the entire design summit that we're at here in a room half the size of this room and all of us were sitting at the same table. Um, scaled really well for that. Um, uh, we've sort of hit this point now. Uh, we have 355 companies involved in OpenStack. We, uh, in the last cycle, merged 17,000 patches. Um, Probably a single machine isn't the thing that we're looking for to take care of that anymore. Um, we, we have 2,000 uh, cumulative contributors and uh, over 450 uh, contributors on a month-to-month -month basis. So on average, we have 466 people contributing to OpenStack every month. Uh, and that's a great success for the project. It's one of those things where for the people dealing with the developer infrastructure, it sort of would be better maybe if we weren't quite so successful um, because all of those people write patches and they submit them to our system and we have to deal with them. Um, this is in fact a graph of, uh, of people interacting with the monolithic Java application that's running in the cloud called Garrett uh, over the last five days. Um, so we've had, uh, what is that, the, somewhere between, and that you can see the weekend. Um, apparently, we don't work on the weekends in OpenStack. Um, so last week, we were, we were doing somewhere around 300, uh, 300 code review uh, activities an hour. Um, some, even, even in the lead up to the summit, we've got people uploading new patches at the rate of about 50 an hour, uh, even, even in slow times, except on the weekend where it's only like 25 an hour. Um, so this is, this is all well and good. Um, this is a lot of patches, and OpenStack is a really complicated piece of software, so we had to write uh, some code to handle the, the, the coordination and, and management, thank you, uh, of, the, of the integration testing of this, right? Because this isn't just uh, one piece of code. It, it's a lot of pieces of code and it's complicated. Um, so uh, if, if you do much with OpenStack development, you'll know that we wrote a piece of software called Zool. Um, uh, Zool is the gatekeeper uh, uh, because it, it helps us manage the gate. Um, and, uh, and what Zool does is it, 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 helps, uh, it helps make decisions about what jobs we're going to run um, to, to be able to test changes that come into the, uh, into the OpenStack developer ecosystem. Um, and in, uh, in a thing that I think is sort of a happy accident, uh, the, the graph of Zool's activity looks a little bit like, I think, the crossing of the 
beams from the Ghostbusters. Um, it doesn't look quite as much like that, and there's not a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man at the end of the graph. Uh, if there was, it would be the best graph ever, but I don't really know what graph <laughs> produces that. So, um, so we'll just assume that actually this, this does that. But so this is, this is, um, this is uh, describing a, a reasonably complicated amount of, of effort that has to go into uh, ensuring that we have um, the, the ability into our, our testing system to be able to test uh, exactly all of those changes that people are putting up and in all the combinations that need to be tested to be, uh, to be accurate. Um, this is where the cloud kind of comes in. Zool itself is actually also kind of, it's in Python, but it's sort of a monolithic thing itself. It, it connects to some message buses, um, but it's, it's kind of like the normal apps you'd write yourself. Um, we need to run, we need to build clouds, right? This is what we're doing here. So every time we say, we talk about testing OpenStack, we're talking about actually spinning up an entire cloud. And um, uh, there's some great uh, slides that Sean Degg's gonna be doing in his Elastic Recheck talk later in the week. Um, with some with some numbers on this one, but we we we're spinning up like 18 clouds per patch, um, uh, and each one of those happens in its own in its own discrete cloud server uh, that we create for specially for the purposes of doing that, and then delete when we're done. Um, this is in fact a lot of cloud activity. Uh, our our public cloud providers uh, who give us things uh, don't always like us, uh, but we we try to do our best. To, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Ulf. For, uh, for, for helping us out there. Um, because we do things like this. Uh, this is the last five days of, um, of the, the output of our node pool system, which is what keeps available uh, nodes, available, uh, nodes available for us to be able to test on. Um, and you can see that uh, uh, roughly about five days ago, there was a period of time where we were using between 900 and 1,000 uh, VMs in, in that particular moment in time. Uh, and you can see that it, it varies quite wildly with um, uh, uh, with the with the activity in in the project, um, you know. So again, the peaks and valleys are there with the with the evening. So this is actually much more your uh, your more stereotypical cloud application. This is custom built for cloud. I need lots of build resources, and I need them in an elastic manner. Um, so what could be better suited for the for the cloud, right? I've I've got elastic resources, and they're actually rising, and my usage of them is rising and falling based on demand. Oh my God, it's like it's it's the exact thing we wrote this for. Um, but this is actually all tied back into that, into that monolithic uh, Java application that we started with. Each of, these, each of these cloud server activities are ultimately triggered by somebody having an interaction with that, with that one Java server. Um, so uh, uh, so it's, a, it's, a, it's sort of more, we talk about hybrid cloud a lot. In, in my mind, this is actually a hybrid application. Um, right, it's we've got we've got traditional applications going in here, and we've got custom built for the cloud applications, and they're 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 operating in in a uh, dare I say the word synergy, but um, you know something like that, like you know synergy corporate word synergy, um, but they're doing that, um, and and what's really exciting about this um, from our perspective, uh, in, on the on the OpenStack infra side, is this is done in a multi-cloud manner. Um, we have two public clouds. Uh, that are providing us resources, and that node pool actually spans them. Um, so I don't have a pool of Rackspace nodes and a pool of HP nodes. I have a pool of nodes that, that, the, that the system is using across those things, and that has been running in that way in production for a couple of years. So if people tell you that, that, that cross-cloud compatibility uh, is, a, is a dream, uh, I can tell you that I do it 10,000 times a day. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty directly. And one of the reasons that this is really important, right? Each of the clouds in and of themselves are fantastic pieces of software. Um, but I don't want the OpenStack infrastructure to, to have this problem. Um, it's, it's sometimes things happen. And when this happens to Netflix, people get really unhappy and people can't watch Game of Thrones or whatever it is that, that, that really happened last time they crashed. Um, but being tied to a single cloud, a single ecosystem, means that, that you're, you're in a monoculture, which means that if there's a systemic problem somewhere, your application sort of has to, to just suck it up and deal with that. Um, whereas if you can spread your load across multiple things, you can weather your application, which is the important thing, can weather, can weather more, of those, more of those things. Then it gets more complicated. We're producing cloud software, right? So it's great that I can install a cloud in a VM in the, in, in the, in the public clouds, um, but what if I wanted to start testing things a little bit more deeply, right? What if I actually maybe wanted to test the Ironic project, which is booting bare metal? Um, I probably can't boot bare metal in a public cloud, uh, or at least not any of the ones that I've got access to. Um, so, uh, so there's lots of different, uh, there's lots of different 
uh, characteristics. There's, 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 even in the public clouds, um, we have different characteristics on them. Some of them have chosen uh, stability over speed. Some of them have chosen speed over stability. Um, and those are, those are valid choices to make as an operator. Um, and as a consumer of those clouds, I can actually take advantage of understanding some of those semantics to, to put some of my load in, in a particular place at a particular time. Um, there's other various things, but there, there may be features that one of them just simply doesn't have, such as, uh, such as a, a bare metal thing. Um, uh, and, and ultimately, the, the point there is that um, uh, one of the reasons for having an ecosystem of multiple clouds uh, is, is that one size, in fact, doesn't fit all. I need to be really clear, however, uh, it, it's, it's made clear to me by, actually, by product management at HP, that I, I, I'm not saying that HP condones um, putting children in boxes. Um, <laughs> and uh, I just want to, I, I get in trouble on stage a lot, uh, and, and that's, that's not the point of this. Uh, we're not selling children in boxes. Um, uh, so anyway, uh, because, because one size doesn't fit everybody, um, we sometimes may need to, to be able to do more things. And this is one of the reasons that we, we started up the, the Triple O project. Um, because we've already got a whole bunch of, of things that know how to do elastic things on, on clouds or to do orchestration with, with, with cloud workloads. So if I can do a similar thing and have a similar environment to get some, some multi-mode bare metal environment so that I can do similar testing that I'm doing in the public clouds for the, for the single node testing, then that's pretty spectacular, right? And it actually gets us to, um, to this graph, which is a little blown out from, uh, from the one I showed earlier of our node pool usage. Um, this is, this is the no our, our current node pool usage broken out by, by provider. Um, and you can see that we've got uh, usage by, uh, by HP and Rackspace, but we also have two different cloud regions that are private cloud instances that are being run by the community using the, using the Triple O software. So I've got now a dynamic, cloud workload spanning public and private cloud instances, and I'm running production workloads on those. This is happening live today. Like this, is, this is going on. This, this is actually a live, uh, this is, I snapshotted it a half an hour ago, but this is straight out of the graphite.openstack.org graphing server. Like this, is, this is the operational stuff. Um, so it, it happens. And so what we wind up with, ultimately, is we wind up something a little bit like this. Um, and this is a very simplified version of our architecture. Uh, there's many more lines and many more boxes in the real version. Um, but, uh, but so over here on the left, we've got, we've got some monolithic applications. We've got some things that are single points of failure. If they go down, it's really bad. Um, and we sort of have to treat them with kid gloves uh, in that way, and we, and we care and feed for them. Um, in the middle, uh, and I did talk about this a lot because uh, I'm running out of time already, um, we, we had originally a, a, a Jenkins server in here, and it turns out it doesn't scale. Um, and that's fine. Uh, we're doing things with it that are evil and, and it, nobody really should be expected to keep up with the, 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 the evil things we do. So we, what we did there is we took it and made it a scale out solution. We added a Gearman bus onto it. So we run eight, uh, nine, eight Jenkins masters at the moment, not just one Jenkins master. And each one of those on average has, we've determined that they, they can handle about 100 slaves. Um, so we, we, we attach those. Our node pool software that manages all of, those, all of those nodes attaches nodes to individual things, and it pulls them out of, this is apparently what the clip art for a cloud looks like, by the way. Um, pulls them out of the cloud and attaches them to the Jenkins. So we have elastic combined with scalable combined with monolithic uh, to get the entire thing, which is my applications. Right? This, is, this is, at the end of the day, the future of cloud. The future of cloud is your applications. The future of cloud is that you don't care about cloud. The future of cloud is that you run your workloads and, and what you're doing using cloud to get it done. Uh, and with that, I am done. And I will pass it on to the next people. Thank you very much. <laughs>